baggage. Old crone. Weird sister. No, not I was not a reply to you, James. Sorry. No, but these are the kind of terms of abuse thrown at the wise old women. And behind me is Allington Castle in Maidstone. And Allington Castle had a small village round it, village of Allington, funnily enough. And when I was a kid, we used to go to dances in the tithe barn, huge tithe barn next to the castle. But this story takes us a few centuries back from me dancing in the tithe barn, even though I am obviously quite aged. And this takes us to the time of Sir Henry Cobham. And to this time of year, now I know I'm a couple of weeks late, but this is still Epiphany Tide. And so it takes us to Twelfth Night. And the celebrations of Twelfth Night in England could be, shall we say, um, raucous? Uh, they could be um, undermining of authority, one could say. Declaring someone who isn't worthy to be king for the night, enthroning somebody, letting somebody find a bean in the pie so that they can rule over the night. And Sir Henry Cobham really, really did not want this to happen again. He liked order. He liked things to be as they should be. And so as Twelfth Night approached, and it was the custom for him to give a feast in the Great Hall of the Castle, he thought tactically, for he knew that the old woman, the crone, the baggage, the weird sister, who lived in a hall on the edge of the village, well, she had the people of the village just where he wanted them. And so he determined that he would invite her as the guest of honour to sit next to him at the Twelfth Night Feast, because then everyone would respect him and there would be at least a reasonable level of decorum through the evening. And so a page was sent to the hovel of the old woman. And of course, she couldn't read, so he had to read it to her. And she said, me, guest of honour? Well, I'll have to think about that. And the page said, you mean you're not going to give your answer immediately? And she said, well, I'm not sure I need to think about that, for that's a very big step for me to take to sit next to Sir Henry de Cobham. And the page threw a package in front of her and said, well, when you've made up your mind, try on those clothes, for Sir Henry de Cobham likes his guests to be dressed properly. And the old woman opened the package and there was a kirtle of blue wool. And there was a new cap for her. And she looked at it and she said, I will give my answer in due time. And the page went off back to the castle. The page didn't actually pass the message on, but then he didn't need to because the old woman decided to take the message herself. And she went to the castle and she went to the great hall and she shuffled into the great hall where Sir Henry de Cobham was receiving uh, visitors. And Sir Henry looked down the hall and saw this baggage, this crone dressed in her dirty rags, shuffling towards him. And he said, oh, no, out. I don't want any filthy peasant in here. I have guests that I am welcoming to my hall. Out! Do not let that in again. And so the old woman was unable to say that she would attend the feast. At least she wasn't able to say it to Sir Henry, which is what she wanted to do. So instead she just looked up at one of the servants and said, make sure Sir Henry gets the message. The old woman, the baggage, the crone, will sit next to him at his feast and she will wear what is appropriate. So it was Twelfth Night and everybody was in the great hall and there was feasting. Oh, and there Sir Henry sat enjoying the food and it was the best food. There was a march pain that they could break and eat 
very rich. I mean, almond paste. I mean, only the richest people would have this. And here was the old crone being offered. But she didn't touch it, though. There was wassail to drink, and they drank from goblet. And the old woman didn't touch her wassail. There were even ginger snaps. She didn't touch a ginger snap. And in the end, Sir Henry de Cobham said, old woman, you are seated next to your lord and master. Do you refuse his hospitality? Here, I have invited you to sit next to me. And she looked at him. And she looked down at herself wearing the blue kirtle with her new cap upon her head. And she said, I apologize, my lord. So she took a cup of wassail and poured it over the cap upon her head. She took some march pain and crumbled it and rubbed it into the clothing. She took a ginger snap and broke it up and stuffed it down her front. And Sir Henry said, what are you doing? How dare you insult me? The room went silent and everybody sat holding their breath to see what the old woman would say in response to the anger of her Lord. And she simply smiled and said, but my Lord, I'm only doing what you wished. And Sir Henry said, how can you say that? I invited you to my feast. I offered you March pain. I offered you wassail. I offered you ginger snaps. And you pour the wassail into your hat. You rub the March pain into your clothing and you stuff the ginger snaps down the front of your dress. And the old woman said, but my Lord, I came here only a few days ago to give you my acceptance of your invitation. And I stepped into your great hall and you said to me, get out. You said to your servants, do not allow that back in here. And yet here I am sitting with you. And the only thing that has changed is my clothing. And therefore, my Lord, it must be that you didn't want me at your feast. You simply wanted this fine clothing and so, my lord, since the clothing is your guest, I feed it with your food and your drink. And any thoughts Sir Henry de Cobham had of a gentle twelfth night disappeared instantly. And that was a night of raucous revelry that Allington never forgot. But by the time people left the hall, the old woman had long been back in her hovel, sitting in her own clothes, sitting by her fire in her own company. And that is my story of the wise woman of Allington, which some of you may recognize as being quite familiar and um, a Nasruddin story. But that's my story. And that's how I told it to you.